Hey Focus fans, it's Alex Worley. I am joined by this week's Empowerista, Rachel McCord. She is the founder of The McCord List and I am so happy you're here. Oh my gosh, I am so excited oh, to be here. First of all, good. it's epically beautiful. <laughs> you're fabulous. I'm just so excited. Girl, you are fabulous. And that is one of the things she promotes, is fabulousness. So what does fabulousness mean to you, first of all? Well, fabulous means really living life to the full mm -hmm. wherever you're at in life. A lot of people have the concept that fabulousness is about like nice cars and money <laughs> and like running around and being a rock star and that's all really great. But I it's in your budget. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If it's in your budget and I think it's really important that you actually rock fabulous wherever you are. It's not about when you reach a certain level of success, when you get a certain amount of money in your bank account or when you lose some pounds or gain some pounds. It's about really owning where you're at today and feeling it to just like, like push into the limits and feeling it. I love your definition because it's so inclusive. You don't have to arrive. You can be fabulous today on any budget or regardless what your title is, right? Absolutely, because life is such a blessing. It's such a gift. And when we have gratitude wherever we are in life, it's like it takes away that pressure of comparing ourselves to other people because the reality is you are fabulous and I can't be you. No one can be you as good as you can be you. So be it, girl. I'm <laughs> feeling more fabulous. Jeez. So tell us about the McCord list. Yeah, so the McCord List is my blog and my community of celebs, influencers, and bloggers who are in LA, they're helping each other, they're rocking, they're setting trends, whether it's fashion, beauty, lifestyle, um, whatever the case may be, they're living life fabulously and they're living it to the full. That's awesome. And there's a lot of sisterhood in your community, which we love over at Empowerista. So tell us how you've seen firsthand the importance of sisterhood. Well, I grew up as the youngest of three sisters. So my middle sister is Annalyn McCord. She's an actress. And my oldest sister is Angel McCord. She is a fabulous gypsy. She loves like she loves people and she loves to support people in what they do. Um, so I always had sisters around me and that was kind of the norm. So when I came to LA to support my sister Annalyn, I, um, I realized that it was also important that I had people in my life too that were, um, that I could lean into and they could lean back into me. And so, you know, we built this community and we've just been having so much fun. And you feel like you're stronger together than you ever would be alone? Absolutely. I think the biggest misconception in business and life in general is that you can get somewhere on your own. Yeah. Um, I grew up from really humble beginnings and so I was always a fighter, a survivor. Yeah. And I was used to the hustle, you know, and so I, I kind of thought I had to rely on myself because I wouldn't have other people protecting me or taking care of me. Um, but in kind of taking myself and, and forcing myself to come out and just like be, be in the limelight in a way that is beneficial to other people, it forced me to stop being so introverted and just really like come into my own and I realized I couldn't do it without the support of my sisterhood, my community, without my husband, without my faith. Like there are certain things that are really important to be a part of that engine that helps you keep going. Totally. And you said that at first you came out to LA to support your sister, but there was a time where you went, okay, what does Rachel want to do? Tell me about that time. Yeah, well I think it, it happens a lot with a lot of women. I mean we are so amazing at being supporters and being the biggest cheerleader for other people and I think at a certain point in your 20s um, and sometimes earlier sometimes later it really right. just depends on your story um, you know a lot of times people can come to that place where they're like what am I doing like what is the purpose who am I in all mm -hmm. of this where do I begin and where do they end and I really had a moment like that I had just come out of a difficult relationship and I needed to step away from Hollywood step away from the dynamics that I was in and um, and I kind of had to face some depression that I had struggled with and really take a hard look at myself and say who do I want to be what impact do I want to be in the community and like when I have kids one day what is the legacy that I want to pass on that's a huge obstacle that you've overcome is depression tell me how you overcame that so once I kind of took a deep look at myself and what I was really going through, I realized that I had to change it, that I cared enough about myself to live a different life. Um, so a couple things that really helped me were finding and meeting the author Louise Hay. She mm. wrote a couple books, one of which is called You Can Heal Your Life. 
and it really helped me. Um, I also read her book, You Can Create an Extraordinary Life, and I really started to, to understand that the root of a lot of my struggles was self-hatred and truly just not loving myself and not appreciating myself as the miracle that I am and the miracle that we all are. We're all beautiful people, incredible, and we have so much potential, but a lot of times we shut ourselves out because we're afraid of greatness and we're afraid of standing out because what happens then? What's the next step? When people start looking at you, all of a sudden it's like, well now what? I gotta be entertaining or something, you know? And so I think there's a, just this whole pathway that, um, that I had to really start to walk down and ask myself those difficult questions. I think there's so much truth in that people are scared to put themselves out there. And I think a lot of that stems from a feel, fear of failure, especially since we live in a society that promotes perfectionism, which is not achievable. And so yeah, you are going to fail. Talk a little bit about that, how you had to come to terms with not being okay with not being perfect. Well, I think it's probably a daily thing, you know, because I live in Hollywood and I work in Hollywood. I'm in the entertainment business. It's one of the most competitive, judgmental industries out there. You have all these people who have really ballsy fingers and they tell you everything they think and they feel. And it's awesome because it, it shows that, you know, you're doing stuff when people are taking notice. But it's also really hard when, you, when you're you know, you're putting yourself out there as a brand or as a person and you're letting people share their opinion and they're, sometimes it's not positive, sometimes right. it is. Um, so I think it's really important to take time to center yourself because in each of us, there's a little person, there's a child, there's a little girl or a little boy who wants to be loved, wants to be accepted, wants to be validated. And a lot of times we can get caught up in our adult worlds and forget that that person matters. And I like to take a lot of time for myself to, to kind of look inside, meditate, do some positive affirmations, that stuff helps me a lot. Does it help you with the constructive criticism in particular, or probably not always constructive, sometimes just criticism? Yes, it does help, and it's also actually made me, it's funny you brought that up, it's made me more open to constructive criticism because I realize that there are people in my life that I can trust, that they actually care about the end result, and they're just wanting to partner with me on the journey and make it as great of a journey as we can possibly do. So I think in that, in that, um, in that place, we can look at those people with respect and, and appreciation that they care enough about your journey to want to speak life into it. And you know when the intentions are right. You gotta trust right, that guy. Right, you know? yeah. <laughs> well, and you're so open to growth. I think that's a big thing when it comes to taking constructive criticism. If you truly want to grow, then you do have to be open to that. Thank you, yeah, I mean, I think the reason why I'm very open to growth is because I really have needed it, you know? <laughs> I've really struggled You're in like, life. I don't have a I don't, <laughs> don't have like, a choice. I've, I've been through a lot of, of difficult stuff. That's why I support girls who deal with depression because of trauma, um, because I understand it, I get it, I've walked in those shoes. And um, and if you don't choose to grow, you can choose to be one of the people who go on and hurt, because hurt people hurt people. So mm -hmm. if you don't decide that you're gonna do something different, and you're gonna prepare yourself for your husband one day, or for your children one day, or your friend, or just to be the best individual you can possibly be for you, which is the most important, you know, you won't be able to step out of where you're at. I love what you said about it being a decision. Is that the key thing right there? Is first you have to decide you want to overcome the hurt? Absolutely. I think that a lot of times we think that we are victims and that is the number one way to give your power away to somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's honestly the most crippling thing you can do yeah. for yourself and to yourself. Um, so yeah, I think you gotta make a decision. You have to realize that you are in charge of your thoughts. We have 60,000 thoughts every single day and so many people think, oh gosh, I'm just a slave to my thoughts. But no, I mean, you might have road rage and think you wanna like punch someone in the face. It doesn't mean <laughs> you're actually powerless to that thought. It's a choice that you make. And so if there's a thought that comes to you and it's negative, destructive, it's unhelpful, then just choose to think something different. Just like, ah, that's crazy, Rachel, calm it down. And then think something different because you have that power within you. And it's that thinking of being a victim and not allowing yourself, like not respecting yourself for the power that you have that can be a problem. Let's talk about Hollywood for a second. Hollywood's kind of a crazy place, and I think that there definitely is this stereotype that it's a very shallow place, but you surround yourself with really empowering people. So talk about the part of Hollywood that's actually really positive. 
Well, I'm gonna be really honest. I have a blast in Hollywood. <laughs> I feel we can so tell. <laughs> we can talk about her Instagram. She's not lying. <laughs> I feel so grateful and so blessed because, like you said, it is the community of people that are around me. Um, I do have one really strong rule that I don't associate with people that cut other people down mm -hmm. and that cut themselves down. Cut, well, with that one, I'm a little bit more lenient. I'm like, girl, wait, let's let's tackle this together. Yeah. I'll just tell them every moment. Be like, ah, you're judging yourself and. You can ask any of my friends. Yeah. So like Rachel will be the person who will call me out yeah. and say, no, 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 no. You give yourself like five positive affirmations because you just said you're ugly. Here's your assignment. <laughs> Report to me tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. I think it's so important. So around the time when you were becoming familiar with the fact that you wanted to make an impact and empower women, how did you know what form it was going to take? That you were actually going to do this blogging, that you were going to create a community and, and speak to women? Well, I'm, I'm super blessed. I married an incredible man who is very talented in launching things. It's actually his company, yeah. Launch. He's launched hundreds of movies, sh TV shows, companies, you name it. And he really took the time and continues to take the time. Because I'll be like, I don't know, is this the right thing? He's like, not again. Not another iteration. But he kind of <laughs> legally signed up for it. So. He totally did. I was like, sign He's quick. Stuck. Sign the dotted line. Come on. No, um, but you know, he's really taken a, a heart into helping me launch this passion to help other people because honestly if you can't find a way in life to bring purpose to your pain you will never be able to truly mm. heal you have to forgive and you have to make it makes make a purpose somehow you have to be able to make a difference with whatever you've been through whether you've had a fabulous life growing up you've had awesome parents who've supported you and friends and family and and people around you it doesn't matter. What is the purpose there? Okay, the purpose is to go on and show people an example of what a fabulous life looks like. Let's talk about your community a little bit. You work with a lot of influencers, so therefore you know a ton about branding. Let's talk <laughs> branding 101 a little bit. For an empowerista watching who's just starting her brand, where should she start? You know, honing in on who you are as a person and what you want to be known for. Um, and then also, a really important part is not straying too far away from who you are. It's the biggest disaster you see with these celebrities that end up, and I can say because I'm a lot of friends who are in that space, and they struggle because they create this brand or their manager creates a brand, and it's fabulous. It's sellable. They sell millions yeah. of records and millions of tickets, and it's a whole shebang, but it's not who they are. So then at a certain point, they put themselves on a pedestal, and then they have to fall down and it's a painful fall. So it's really important to make sure that whoever you decide to promote yourself as, it's super close to your brand. It's okay if there are parts of you that you don't show. I mean, I'm 31 flavors, everyone says it. Like, <laughs> I either go from like homeless chic to like red carpet, so I don't really have an in-between, right? But but I'm real about that, you know what I mean? And so if someone ever caught me looking a little scary, at least they know, well, she said that's how she is, you know? It's like they it's fabulous. It's an alignment with who she is. <laughs> exactly. So, so we're good. Exactly. You just have to be real and you have to be open to that discovery and have someone to be a sounding board, whether it's a coach, a friend, a family member, someone who can help you be like, oh my gosh, you have been doing that since you were this tall. And then you can be like, oh, well, maybe there's a passion there. Mm -hmm. And you learned that lesson the hard way a little bit when you first were in LA and were acting and you took a role that you didn't, in hindsight, feel comfortable with, but it was probably a really, really important lesson to learn. Tell me about that. So I um, had this opportunity that came up, and they're like, we want to put you in this movie, it'll be so great, da, da, da. And I was like, okay, sure, it'll be an experience. I don't know what I want to do with my life, so why not? Unfortunately, I was cursing a lot in it, and it was just like not the type of brand that I really like. Especially liked. for someone who doesn't even like the H word. I, I know, right? And I'm not cursing. That's way so, out there. Totally. I mean, and I'm like, don't think I'm perfect, and I don't drop it. When no, it but you me. know yourself and what you feel comfortable with, and that wasn't an alignment. So you yeah. learned your lesson, an important lesson to learn. And now you move forward and make decisions accordingly, right? Absolutely. I'm, I'm much more protective now of my brand. In fact, when, I, when my publicist will come up with an idea, I'm like, I love that, but I want to make sure it's really me. Uh -huh. You know, so you just become more, like you identify with your gut and then you listen to it more. You are so inspirational. This has been really? so much fun to talk to you. I just have one more question for you, and that is what is your definition of empowerment? Um, well, empowerment to me means to look at someone else and not to look at the things that are wrong with them, but to look at the things that are right and to 
pour into those areas and encourage them in those areas and help them do it. And just the same example would be what you do to yourself. So instead of looking at the things that are wrong with the picture, look at what's right, help what wants to happen and see beauty come. Oh, I love it. Well, when I look at you, I just see fabulousness. Thank oh, you so much for so chatting sweet. with me. And you at home, be sure to use hashtag Empowerista to let us know what your definition of empowerment is. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>